Hey what's up guys, it's Nick2 with the season coming out. A lot of you guys have been asking me to post a Necromancer leveling guide, so here it is. Necromancer is going to be one of the strongest classes in Season 1. You do a crazy amount of damage with Bone Spear. Despite all the nerfs, the build is still unbelievably strong, but it's also one of the better leveling builds in the game because it just starts off very strong, so I'm going to be going over everything that you guys need to know. Leveling is a little bit precarious with how you want to actually spend your skill points. There's not like a guaranteed set in stone way to spend your skill points, but I'll go over what I think is good, give you guys some options as well as talking about which legendaries that you want to look out for, some stats on gear, briefly go over the new Malignant Hearts. We don't have access to them yet, but we will pretty soon. I'll also have an endgame build posted for you guys pretty soon after launch, so by the time that you're done getting to like level 50 to 60, um, I'll probably have an endgame guide already posted for Necromancer, so feel free to subscribe if you haven't already to check that out. But yeah, let's just get into the build. Uh, real quickly, I want to give a big thanks to today's sponsor, Signal RGB. Intel, along with Signal RGB and Skytech Gaming, have come together to create this masterpiece of a Diablo 4 inspired PC that has swirling potions inside that dynamically react to your current health and resources in real time. This is possible with the Signal RGB application, which actually syncs different RGB devices from any brand, so you can perfectly customize your own lighting experience regardless of the devices that you have. This PC was even custom created and 3D printed by the team over at Skytech to bring you the best cooling and performance possible. With an Intel 13 600K and an RTX 4070, you can run Diablo 4 absolutely perfectly. To enter the giveaway, click the link in the video description below. All right, so first we're gonna go over the skill points. The entire list of the skill points and how you wanna spend them will actually be over on my website. If you want to just very easily copy paste, you don't really care about the methodology and the reasons that we're using different things. For those of you that are min-maxers or you just feel like you, know, you wanna know why we're using things and you would like the option of using different things, I'm gonna be rather diligent with you guys and go over that. Unfortunately, there is no best in slot, you know, set in stone way to actually spend all of your skill points. There's a decent amount of options that you guys have. I'll go over most of them. The main option is really to minion or to not minion. If you don't like minions, just don't play with the minions. But leveling, they are actually pretty good. You end up sacrificing them because the bonuses are just good. But while you're leveling, your biggest problem with Bone Spear is your essence generation. And the minions actually help with that. And they also actually do pretty good damage. So... With the build, we're going to start out with some minions, talk about some skill points that we spend, and later on, once you transition into endgame, you want to swap off of the minions. Starting off with the skills, we're going to go into Reap. The reason for this is Reap is the best essence generator. Even though we have to stand in melee, it has a scaling ability where it gives you four essence per enemy, where all the other generators are stuck on just one enemy. If you don't like playing in melee, feel free to not use Reap and use Bone Splinters instead. But Reap has the added benefit of giving you uh, damage reduction, giving you attack speed, and also forming a corpse guaranteed. The guaranteed corpse actually ends up being particularly good for us when we start using corpse tendrils, which we will use for a couple different reasons. Then we're going to go into Bone Spear with Supernatural Bone Spear. Bone Spear is just great. It's one of the best leveling skills, if not almost the best one while leveling. It does cost essence, which unfortunately, you know, we're going to have to build into some essence gen, but it starts off just one-shotting stuff. It has a high lucky hit chance. The base damage is insane, but also you get vulnerable literally for free on your core skill, which is a massive quality of life that Necromancer gets to take advantage of. We're just going to fully level it up. Don't think too much about it. You could go into Corpse Explosion earlier or something and min-max a little bit, whatever. We're going to go into Corpse Explosion and then three points into Grim Harvest. This just gives us a crazy amount of essence starting off. We only have like 100 essence, right? Our essence gen is going to feel really crappy. So getting as much as possible is really good for us. Even though we don't want to be sitting here like spamming Corpse Explosion like crazy just for a tiny bit of essence, trust me, you're going to want the essence early on. Then we're going to go into Iron Maiden and Enhance Iron Maiden for even more Essence. Again, it is only 5 Essence. You could make the argument, oh, well, Bone Prison is 25. Well, Bone Prison also has like a 20 second cooldown when you're level 1, so I wouldn't recommend it. Iron Maiden is free Essence, and if you pair it with Corpse Tendrils, Corpse Tendrils isn't really going to give us much value early on. The main benefit of it is that we can apply a or get a corpse guaranteed by just reaping, and then we can suck everything in so we can kill like five mobs that would otherwise we'd have to go bone spear, bone spear, bone spear, bone spear. We can just spawn the corpse, reap them all in, boom, they're all sucked up. We love sucking the guys. And then one bone spear, everything dies. And when you pair that with Iron Maiden, when you get all the guys in, you can throw down the Iron Maiden. If there's like five guys, boom, you got 25 essence back. You threw one bone spear. You basically paid for your own bone spear. And then you can, you know, get some corpses down with um, generating essence if you want to. You can also end up using Skeletal Mage Mastery and spawning a lot of um, minions and therefore spending the um, corpses or 
consuming corpses rather for the extra essence there. Real quickly, I'm going to go into Fueled by Death because I think at this point we don't yet have our mages. If you are, you know, still, you, you go into the season with some uh, skill points, right? So you're not going to yet have your mages. The second that you unlock your mages, uh, you're going to go into Skeletal Mage Mastery. The reason for this is you're just going to make them do more damage. The question now becomes to minion or not to minion. Um, if you don't want to use the skirmishers, these guys kind of suck. Early on, I just use like spawn an extra skirmisher warrior, whatever. They're nice. They do a little bit of extra damage. They're not crazy. Around level 30 or so, I would recommend taking them off and just sacrificing them. But the mages actually end up being pretty good. I don't remember what, ma what level you get cold at. I think you get cold at like 18 or something like that. Uh, start off, just use shadow or something. But cold ends up being really good because their primary attack will just give you two essence. So the essence generation for this is in, is just really good. And also the minions actually do pretty good damage. So buffing their damage, buffing their HP. Trust me, you're going to like it at least to like level 30, level 40 maybe. I'd recommend using this. But if you absolutely hate mi uh, minions, just feel free to sacrifice them. And sacrificing uh, cold mages for the 15% vulnerable damage is actually quite nice. But um, I think it is very good to play with them early on in the build. After we have buffed them, we're going to go for a bit of survivability. Uh, Iron Maiden gives you a nice little heal, and then we're going to get Blood Mist just for the oh shit button. But if you feel like you do not need the uh, random immunity here and there, you could decide to go for uh, Bone Prison Essence, or you can even go for Bone Storm for a little bit of crit chance here and there. Cooldown is too long, doesn't happen too often, so I'd say this last skill point, you can kind of do whatever you want, but I like Blood Mist just, you know, in case something bad happens, you have a way to get out of it. At this point, I just go into a bit of damage. Um, you can decide to go for like you know some other stuff, but I'm going into damage for the 12% distant damage and also the 12% damage against enemies afflicted with um, curses, which is our Iron Maiden. And then I'm going to go two points into Inspiring Leader because this gives us a bunch of attack speed, not only for us, but also our mages so that they attack more, so that they give us more essence. And then I'm going to go into Ossified. Ossified just scales our damage. We don't have too much maximum essence, at this point in the leveling process, but you'll start getting it more on gear within your skill tree and some other stuff. But it also is just literally just free damage when you spec into it. Then we're gonna go finish up Inspiring Leader for the additional attack speed there. At this point, if you feel like your minions are dying a lot, you can go into Death's Defense or you can go into Hellbent Commander to just buff them. It's kind of preference. Um, if they're dying a lot, just go into Death's Defense and they should stop dying. But if they're also dying way too much, even with this, just decide to take them off, right? Then you can go three points into Hellbent Commander, so they just do a bit of extra damage. And then at this point, you can go one into Unliving, uh, and Perfectly Balanced is currently bugged right now, but should be fixed by the time you were playing. Dump three points into this for extra damage, dump the points into Unliving Energy to just increase our maximum essence, which is going to scale off of Ossified pretty well. And we have 13 points, so we can kind of just do whatever we want with. You can decide to max out Corpse Tendrils, just make it a lower cooldown. Personally, I'm going to go uh, one into Serration, three into Compound Fracture for just extra damage and then three into Avulsion, and then I'm gonna finish maxing out Serration for the extra crit chance and stuff. And then at this point, I would have one point spent over, or, or sorry, I would have um, two points left over because I wasn't able to put the points into Imperfectly Balanced. I would just put the points into like Corpse Tendrils uh, just to reduce the cooldown further. But if you are not playing with minions, if you decided, I hate the minions, screw this crap, I don't wanna do this anymore, Nick, you suck, um, take the points out of Hellbent Commander and Death Defense, and you wanna put three into Standalone, three into Memento Mori, and then the remainder, again, you could just go into Corpse Tendrils for the cooldown reduction there, and Memento Mori gives you the sacrifice bonus, so that you get uh, the bonus of using, like, I won't show you guys the sacrifices, but the crit chance, the crit damage, and the vulnerable damage. Standalone only works when you don't have minions. If you do have minions, the mages, it will still work, but it's not really worth specking into, but when you don't have minions, you just get straight up 18% damage reduction, which is very good. Also, you take the points out of Skeletal Mage Mastery, forgot about that, Again, you just go into like Corpse Sendrels or something, and you can put some points into like Death's Embrace so that enemies just deal less damage to you. This would be an endgame version of the setup where, you know, the minions start sucking, and then you just go pure endgame. And I guess I would go like that because I have the extra points here that I can't put here, which is very fun, but yeah. That's how you want to set up the skill tree. Pretty easy. Just play with Bone Spear the whole way, and you'll be hard chilling. All right, let's get into the legendaries. The only one you care that much about is Splintering Aspect. You can get this very early on in Golden Slums in the Dry Steps. Don't put this on a two-hander. It'll increase your damage a good bit. Not really that much. I mean, you get a bit of extra uh, shards. That's pretty much the main reason that you want it. I wouldn't stress about it. It's not nearly as good as it used to be because you do not get free vulnerable application from this anymore. And the scaling on it is not nearly as good as it used to be. So getting this isn't going to like magically transform your build, but it will help you. A thing that will kind of transform the build is Grasping Veins. Unfortunately, this is like a level 45 dungeon. So I wouldn't recommend going in here unless you have people carrying you or unless 
you're just a giga chad and you think you can do the dungeon like 20 levels under and you're just trying to get the aspect this is really good i'd recommend putting it on an amulet or something you get the crit chance you get the crit damage and it is the main reason that we really like using corpse tendrils and it will end up being super busted once we have one of the malignant hearts which you actually get very early on into the game one of the main problems with the build is your resource there's some other legendaries which i'll go over with the gear but most of them don't matter that much when it comes to resource these are the legendaries that you want to be on the lookout for. I wouldn't recommend really unlocking their codex. Uh, Aspect of the Umbral is only a one from codex. It'll help you with corpse tendrils once you start specking into the slow and with the stun. And if you have Decrepify, that's also another slow. So you get a lot of free resource with having Umbral Aspect on. Another very fantastic one that I'd actually recommend maybe going for if you really, really want to. It sounds like a good idea to you. Uh, Aspect of Potent Blood is okay. Anytime that you pick up a blood orb while you're at full HP, you get 10 essence. How do we spawn blood orbs? Well, you could just put the points into enhanced corpse tendrils, and then corpse tendril spawns a blood orb. Just take the points out of like Death's Embrace or like the cooldown reduction here, and then you get the blood orb guaranteed, and then boom, that's a little bit of extra essence for you. I wish there was like a keybind to get to the codex of power, dude. I gotta do like 20 mouse clicks. Ruins the recording, okay? Um, other stuff. A uh, Requiem Aspect might be okay if you're still playing with mages. I wouldn't really go out of your way to unlock it. Aspect of Torment is terrible. Don't get this. It only increases your base regeneration, um, so that is not good. It makes... With Codex, I, I don't think it actually does anything if you put it on, unless the game works in decimals. But if you have... You have three Essence per second without this, and when you equip this, drumroll please, you go up to brrr, four Essence per second. So you get an extra one Essence... Per second so i would not recommend going for that um, another thing that you want to actually look out for on gear is getting exposed flesh i have looted one of these my necromancer is level 100 and i have looted one so be on the lookout for these if it drops don't imprint it on a piece of crap ring like i did save it forever cherish it like it is your own child it is very hard to get these be on the lookout umbral rings are also very hard to get be on the lookout i'd highly recommend spending your obols gambling rings so that you can get um, umbral rings and exposed flesh these are going to basically single-handedly fix your essence problems another thing that will fix your essence problems is gloves with chance to restore primary resource you can actually get decent roll of these pretty early on into the leveling process and these will massively help your essence gen um, you don't really need to have like high lucky hit or anything i play with base lucky hit and the amount of essence you get from this is crazy when it comes to the stats on your gear and other stuff, like I guess other legendaries, disobedience, aspect of might, nothing really matters too much. Um, serration is important. Try to save a max roll of serration and splintering. They're actually very rare to get a max roll of both of those. So I definitely save them if you get them. Uh, serration is very good for just giving you extra crit damage. I wouldn't recommend imprinting anything on a two-hander, just way too expensive. But if it happens to drop, it's a nice damage increase. And obviously grassing veins too is insane. Uh, Edge Masters is like okay for damage, but don't worry about it too much. Stats on gear, uh, vulnerable damage is going to be really good for you. Core skill damage, intelligence starting out, that's just really, really strong because you don't have too much additive stuff. Um, outside of that, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Try to get boots with uh, movement speed because that'll just speed up the leveling process for you. I'd recommend using a two-hander, particularly a scythe is really good because the life on kill is actually pretty insane. They drastically nerfed the crit damage inherently on swords, so the life on kill, I actually would recommend at this point. And also, having a two-hander just gives you the benefit of having like a better legendary on here. But while leveling, just get whatever's higher item power. You just care about the base damage, because that's going to scale your damage overall. When it comes to other stats, I don't know, it doesn't matter much. Just try to get vulnerable damage where you can. Crit chance is good. Get any amount of like, you know, ideal extra damage with bone skills or physical damage. While leveling, it doesn't matter. Um, you'll you'll be owning perfectly fine. Look out for you know movement speed, uh, some cooldown reduction, more movement speed, essence cost reduction, those sorts of things. Just getting good gloves is the best thing that you could possibly get because it gives you bone spear ranks, crit chance, and maybe the lucky hit restore. But bone spear ranks is very important for overall damage and just getting better weapons all the time. Anytime you get a new weapon, look at it, see if it's higher damage. If it's higher damage, equip it nine out of ten times. Outside of that, movement speed is pretty good. Uh, that's pretty much it for the build. Um, it's pretty simple. Leveling isn't crazy. Let's go over some Malignant Hearts. So Malignant Hearts, boom. Um, Necromancer has some pretty crazy ones. Cage Heart of the Sacrilegious is unbelievably busted if it just free casts like Corpse Explosion and Corpse Tendrils for you. Free Corpse Tendrils 
all the time if you just have a corpse there is really crazy good highly recommend using this um, if you can and you can actually get it early on another thing you can get early on is the decrepit aura where you just spawn decrepifies for free which seems really good to me so that might be pretty good feel free to look into that um, the other ones i would not recommend because this is only world tier 4 so don't look too much into it um, this one is trash there's some general ones that are pretty good but most of them are locked behind like tier 3 um, so i wouldn't worry too much about it uh, one of them that looks okay is the determination one for like I don't know, resource gen, it gives you resource gen rather than resource regen. So resource gen would actually be helpful. You would work with like the skeletal mages. It would work with um, the corpse giving you essence stuff. So this might be good to look out for. A lot of this other stuff seems pretty trash. Actually, um, sorry, malignant pact seems really, really good. I'd look into getting that as soon as possible if you can. That seems pretty strong. Plus the necromancer one, if you can. But I imagine you're probably not going to have like a perfect one of these just while leveling. Um, we'll see what happens, but we don't know yet. The rest of these don't seem all that good, but again, the season isn't out yet, so we don't know for sure. Just figured I might as well throw it in there in case you're looking at some hearts and you don't really know which ones you guys want to be looking out for. Those are the ones that I would recommend. Thanks for watching. Again, all the skill points will be posted over on the website. Hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please make sure to drop a like, subscribe for videos similar to this one, and again, in a full end game guide will be out probably by the time that you are finished watching this video, so feel free to check that out. Uh, once it is posted, if you want to know how to blast in the endgame. Necromancer seems very promising, especially with a lot of the um, malignant hearts that we're getting. And Bone Spear already was really strong, so I'm excited to see how it performs in Season 1. Hope you guys have fun, and thanks for watching. See ya.